G'day guys, time for another video and uh, finally got my hands on the Julka hot tap hot water system that we're going to install in the camping trailer. Uh, big box, very big box. <laughs> uh, just going to do a quick unboxing here, have a look at the components, see what's in here and see how to put it all together. Now just point out that uh, this is not a uh, review video based on something we've been sent. We paid for this, the whole lot, ourselves. Uh, not cheap, $599 and this is their top end kit. So uh, anything I say about it, you can be sure is accurate. Because I'm not being given a freebie and uh, so I'm not going to be saying nice things about it because someone's given to me. If I say anything good about it, it's because it is good. And these ends become your draining rack. So that will drain back into the tub. Let's see what we get. First things first, we get a manual of sorts, quick start guide, plumbing. Yeah, well, hopefully not going to need that. Uh, nobody wants to read manuals. Everybody just wants to set things up. And if it's been designed properly, you should never have to read a manual. Okay, red hoses for the hot water. Okay, that's your main heating unit. Blue hoses for cold water. Now this one comes with extra hoses because you've got a sink connector. They've all got nice little straps on them to keep the hoses together when they're rolled up, that's a good idea. Gas hose, and uh, that's actually got a POL connector, which is good, uh, because the bigger gas cylinders and uh, even the 4 kilo ones come with the POLs, so you don't have to buy an adapter to hook that up to a standard gas bottle. A couple of batteries in there, that'll be for the pump, I'm guessing. That, I assume, is the pump, inlet and outlet. Okay, the little arrow on there shows you the direction of flow. The tap for the sink. Adjustable nozzle, can be swiveled and raised and lowered. Switch on there will be your on off switch. Now, based on that, it's not an electrical switch, so the pump must be an on demand pump. And here we have the shower head. Again, you've got the on off switch, adjustable head. All feels pretty nice. Seems to be well manufactured. It's a clip on connector. Now, what, apart from just being a switch, that's not a filter by the looks of it. It's just the on off for your shower head's water flow. Now we've got a little, a little um, I'm not even sure what you call that. 
but anyway that will be part of the water pickup if you throw your hose into a stream it will keep the inlet off the bottom and stop it from sucking in silt and sand couple of connectors there one will be for the tap the other one for the shower head power source so it is to a cigarette lighter adapter I would actually prefer to see an Anderson plug on there rather than this but uh, I guess it's not something you're going to be using when you're on the road so it's not likely to shake loose in transit it's only just going to be plugged in not sure if that's fused or not but in any case you should have individual fuses run to each line uh, from your battery and we do have that This is the stand that the hot water unit sits in. Oops, something popped out there. I'll find out what that was. Little escapee there was just a hose connector. We also have the water filter. That's your water pickup. So that will stop gunk getting into your pump. And this is what they call the Nomad kit, which is all the bells and whistles. Uh, it goes down to 399 I believe, for the basic kit. Now there is a bracket available for this that you can put it up and mount it temporarily. But as I make this video, the bracket is not available in Australia. It is supposed to be available in early August 2021. Uh, so I wasn't able to purchase that. And I'm going to look for an alternative way of doing it simply because the bracket costs $89, which I think is a little bit on the pricey side. When you first get the unit, there is some plastic you have to remove from the sides. So just get rid of that. And let's see how this fits into its stand. Okay, it does eventually go in. Yeah, pretty uh, stable once it's in the stand and uh, once that's in what we've got here let's make sure we're looking at the right thing water flow so you dial that up to increase your water flow temperature that will increase the temperature of the water so there'll be two ways of increasing temperature if you reduce if you have your temperature set lower and reduce the flow of water that will bring the temperature up or you can increase the flow of water and uh, bring your temperature up full now it's supposed to be heat regulated so that it doesn't burn you and we have here a little gauge that uh, serves as an error indicator and a temperature indicator that will tell you what temperature your water is so let's have a look at uh, how the hoses go on and all the connectors are push on connectors pretty standard garden style hose connectors that of course is the water filter we saw earlier and uh, guessing that uh, it's just a matter of flipping everything together okay and we've got a series of connectors here uh, hose to hose connector it's good that these things are all strapped together so you're not going to lose them easily another hose to hose connector a three-way connector so you can hook up your shower and your sink at the same time so uh, I'm not entirely sure why I've got two of those that I'll probably have to read the manual for but there's two of those red hoses that of course will be a shower hose a long hose that'll go from the water heater to the shower head or from the triple connector to the shower head and we have two cold hoses okay so this is your water filter and that is supposed to be slim enough to fit down into an ordinary jerry can we'll find all that out later when we uh, do some actual testing of the unit 
So the idea of that is you just drop it down into your water source, your water filter will keep all the gunk out and uh, keep your pump from getting filled up with yuck. pump's pretty hefty actually um, that would indicate that it's pretty decent quality so your cold water hose goes into the cold water inlet so your water flow is going this way so you're going from that direction so the order of connection is cold water hose to your water source Your water filter on the end of that and then your inlet to the hot water heater cold hose to your water pump so that will suck your water through and your red pipe will be the water coming out from the other side once it's all working so it's all very simple to put together yeah, not sure about that switch. We'll see how long that lasts. Hopefully it's a good one. It just feels a little bit light. It's uh, positive enough. Hopefully they test those things over several thousand uh, <laughs> clicks. And uh, your cigarette lighter adapter, of course, will plug into the back of that. Now the next thing will be to find out exactly what we're supposed to do with these batteries. Now what are they? D cells? C cells? I never know these things. Oh, they're very lightweight batteries. There's not much power in those, I think. You'd be better off getting some rechargeable ones, I think, for this. Okay, they're D cell. So the holder for the shower head can be hooked onto something. But it's also got a magnet in the back of there, so you can whack that straight onto the side of your vehicle and then clip in your shower head and turn it on and off from there if you like uh, makes it a very easy way of putting up the shower head uh, if you want a quick shower outside if you've just been for a swim at the beach and you just want to clean off the salt water that'd be pretty useful uh, won't be much use inside the shower tent itself but uh, yeah just a handy little addition I guess Okay, so the batteries that come with the unit go into this little holder and that slides up into the bottom of the unit. That will be the power source that actually starts up the ignition. Assuming it goes that way around. And uh, I'm guessing there is only one way to put this in. Let's have a look. Spring there. Some sort of connector there. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so it's a little click on, click off. Yeah, pretty good idea. Once that's clicked in, it's secure. And you just push it again to remove it. So yeah, nice design, good idea. Also useful that the gas adapter and even the inlets to the water on the hot water unit come with little covers so that just helps to keep muck and grit out of the ends of those as I said before that's a standard POL connector for your gas bottle and the other end I'm assuming is just a push on yeah it looks like just a straight push on connector gas line is a well, reasonable length I guess a couple of meters a couple of meters is that no not a couple about one and a half maybe oh, let's say four feet in the old terms just guessing but uh, pretty close to that so you can get your gas bottle oh, I guess not a long way away but reasonably but a reasonable distance from the hot water unit itself okay so I would just be a little careful pushing the gas connector on just hold the top of the unit while you push that on because it does take a little bit of force to get that on and that could tip the unit over as part of the process of putting that on if you put too much pressure from underneath 
Now this is your sink and of course also the container that everything fits back in. Uh, going to be fun to remember how it went but never mind. Tap holder just slides into a slot on the side there. The slot's in three different positions on each side. I'm not quite sure why you might want to. Uh, it's no, obviously not meant for that one. It's a bit loose so it's meant for the centre. Air tap just clips into that. A little bit wobbly but mm, secure enough I guess. So that's adjustable and the height is adjustable. And of course your hot water hose will fit onto the back of that. So that's a very easy way to connect the tap. Your on off switch on the front there so you're not going to waste any water. And the drying racks go on each side. Let's just see how well they fit in. Ah yes, okay, that's what that other hole is for. And that just slides in and clips on so it sits there nicely. Yeah, very well thought out actually. I'm quite impressed with this so far. Uh, hopefully it's going to have longevity as well as a uh, good design. But it's looking pretty good I've got to say. Now there's a water drainage hole on the end of the sink here. But I guess the only thing they haven't really thought of is uh, a hose. You don't usually want to drop that directly under the sink. Makes a bit of a mess. Let's see how easy that is to get out. That could have been a little bit easier to bring out. I suppose if the cap on that was a little bit longer. Because uh, I've got fat little fingers, little sausage fingers. People with uh, needle fingers would get that off pretty easily. Got a screwdriver slot there to make it easier if you want to get it off. You could actually slip at the end of a knife or something in there, I guess. So, yeah, just some sort of uh, drainage hose coming out of there would be useful, I think. And I guess surprisingly, it actually all fits back in the box quite nicely, even after it's been unpacked. So, uh, always a good thing to be able to pack up simply and easily. Okay, so that's the first uh, quick unboxing and setup of the Joker Hot Tap. So I believe is version 2 and uh, the next video of course uh, will be about the actual use of it uh, once we've got it all set up and we're camping somewhere and then we can show you what it really is like I'm going to be interested to find out how quickly the water heats up because one thing I've had a problem with in the past with gas heaters is the waste of water we did have one system installed in a motorhome where it wasted quite a few litres of water before it started to heat. And it's really important to save water when you're out in the bush. So if this thing comes on a lot quicker and you get the hot water through the hose very fast, uh, that will be very good and uh, there will be another plus for it. But I won't be able to tell you that until the next video. Well thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, if you did Give us a quick like down the bottom there. And if you enjoy what we do on the channel, give us a subscribe. All helps to get the channel noticed on YouTube. And uh, these days it's getting very difficult to be noticed. As uh, YouTube has decided to make life very difficult for small creators like us. So uh, cheers for now and we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.